Hello, and welcome to this looping guide for Space Invader switches, also known as High Tech 725 series. Today we're going to be looking at numerous types of loops, both wet and dry. We're going to be doing a switch teardown, and we're going to include some different types of loops that haven't been covered before as well. So for this looping guide, we're going to be looking at the white one-i linear variant of High Tech Space Invaders. This is one of the most common switches you can find in their keyboards. So to take these switches apart, we are going to be pressing on these two tabs, one on the top here, and then there's one also on the bottom. I like to use a plastic spudger as it won't uh, make marks in the bottom housing, and there's a center post here also that we have to be concerned about. So I like pulling my fingers on each side of the slider, and then pushing down with the spudger on the first tab, and then flipping it over, and then getting the second one. Oh, or we can just pull it apart straight. So now we have avoided breaking the contacts or bending them as they are super fragile. So the main areas that we're going to be focusing on are the three points inside the slider here. So one, two, and three, as well as the curved or the circular parts of the cylinder, I guess you could call it. These are the points that were the slider actually gets in contact with the bottom housing and can cause the friction when the switch is operated. Now, we don't lubricate the actual um, part that separates the contacts as that should never be looped as it can interfere with the actual contacts closing. So three out of the four loops that we're going to be looking today are dry loops. Those dry loops are finish line, R059, and this new DuPont non-stick loop. The only wet loop that we're going to be using today is Tribosis 3204. So for our first loop, I'm going to use Tribosis 3204. We're not going to worry about the bottom housing right now. We're going to focus on the slider. So you want to make sure that we get all the crevices of the slider actually lubricated. So going all the way down to the bottom and making sure that you get all of the sides as well all the points that are going to be in contact with the bottom housing. I would use dental picks as well. I've used them as well for the small areas, but I think the paintbrush gets a better, more even coat of uh, lubricant compared to the dental picks. And one thing to note that all these switches that we are looping today are new old stock, so they will have an even comparison across all of them. Okay, so that's been looped. Uh, we're not going to be worried about the bottom housing as the loop will jump from here into the bottom housing as well. It's also more difficult and you decide you can get it kind of sprayed all over the place. So we're going to be putting back the switch together. So first thing we're going to do is put the spring in. Next is the actual slider. So for this point, I like to um, make sure that we put the switch on its side. You want to make sure that the spring sits in a little divot that comes out of the um, slider. And then we're going to simply just wiggle back and push. And then you want to activate the switch at least a few times before uh, moving on to the next one. So. I'm going to do the other loops and show you how to do those next. So the next loop we're going to be looking at is R059. Um, you just put a piece of cardboard down because this is a wet loop to start and then turns into a dry loop after a while. So you want to make sure that you get everywhere once again on the slider in all locations. Oops, as I'm missing a little bit there. And that's essentially it. So we're going to repeat this until we get to the spray loop, essentially. So for the spray lubricant, we're going to use a bigger piece of cardboard because this can really get all over the place. And we just want to inject the uh, spray lubricant all in this slider here. Like 
like that. Ooh, see how much extra comes out? And you want to tilt the slider so that any extra falls out. So essentially, because this stuff will get all over the place. Um, it will stink a bit as well, so I would recommend doing this in a well-ventilated area. Um, you can do a bunch of sliders at a time, and it might be easier that way. Um, we'll see. Now for our sound test, what we're going to be using is an old RT-101 chassis. This is a Gen 4 chassis, and we're going to be doing the switches in order, as you can see, the lubricants in the same order. So we got 3204, we got R059, finish line, and then we got the spray non-stick uh, Teflon lube. Here's a quick little sound test. So for conclusion, the 3204 is definitely the dampest sounding one. The R059 is pretty good compared to the other two um, dry loops. As for smoothness, the 3204 you have to activate a bit more. It feels like you have to use the switch before it actually gets um, smoother. Where the other ones, they kind of feel all about the same. The sound profiles are a bit different, for sure, though. Uh, as for off-center key presses, the 3204 is probably the best, depending on where. Um, the Teflon loop, the spray loop, is probably the better than the finish line in this case, surprisingly. And the R059 is probably about um, about the same, I'd say. Maybe a bit better. Easier to apply for sure than the uh, spray lube. So ranking for the dry lubes, I'd put the R059 as the top. Uh, next contender would be the Teflon spray lube and then for the last dry loop, the finish line. And then if you want to compare the two sounds, the 3204 is definitely a deeper sounding because it is a wet loop compared to the R059. Um, but I find the R059 is more along the lines of better sounding if you want to go for a stock sound and just want to re-lubricate your switches if they are a bit scratchy. So take that as you will. Uh, I still think the R059 is definitely a better upgrade than finish line. And it is still readily available. You can still get it. Um, it is a new formula. It has been, I believe, it's been slightly tweaked. Um, but these two, the 3204 and R059, are definitely the best, I would say, out of all the loops. This is a nice, cheap option. Um, you can get it on eBay for about 10 bucks. Um, that I think includes shipping in, within the U.S. If you're outside the U.S., this might be harder to get. I know that it used to be available, um, not so much depending on your region. So yeah, uh, that concludes it. I will be doing a switch um, lubing and building of a Space Invaders custom that you can find right here at my Twitch, and we're live right now.